We're going with uh, David, prophetic David, written in December once again. And uh, if you can come with me, you have it there. Amos 9, verse 11 to 12. Mark it in your Bible. If you don't have a Bible that you can write in, ask me for one. Write what God is saying to you. Write the revelation. Write and uh, give that as part of your legacy to your children or your grandchildren one day. So that they will know what God has said to you. Can that not be awesome? If you have your grandchild can say, this is what, this is what God told Granny about our lives. Yes, man. In that day, I will raise up the tabernacle of David, David, the fallen hut or booth, and close up its breaches, and I will raise up its rooms, and I will build it as in the days of old. Now, a lot of other translations talking about, I will restore, I will restore, I will bring a restoration. And we're talking about, how is the, how's the theme there on the pamphlet? It says what? Nobody can speak. Anybody? The challenge of restoration and reformation. Restoration, I want to start with. When you need to restore something, my brother, my sister, you need to know what, I'm rest what is being restored unto something. If I don't know the original pattern, what on earth are you restoring? So when God is working in your life and he's restoring things, but you don't know the original pattern, you don't have any clue what God is doing. But and you don't know what God is doing because you didn't look at the, look here. You didn't look at the pattern. You don't know the pattern. And if you don't know the pattern, the awesome depth of the pattern and the symbolic meaning of what God is saying, especially through the Old Testament, if you don't know the original pattern, whatever God is restoring, you don't have any cooking clue what he's doing. And sometimes he doesn't want us to know what he's doing. But, guys, so many, 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 many times, God wants you to see what he is seeing. Hello? You will find, I'll give the guy 10,000 rand that can tell me without Google. <laughs> Go and count in the Bible how many times through the prophets or God himself or somebody said, see, I'm doing this. Or look, I'm doing this. You know about that? Hey, see, I'm doing something new. Cake, I do needs needs. And what is that scene talking about? My brother, my sister, if you can go out here today with that. Awesome. When God says see, he's like, see what I am seeing. Don't know if you can say see what I see. Good English? Hmm. See what I see. And that is at the end of the day, God wants you to see what he is seeing. So when you speak to God about your circumstances, and you want the circumstances to change, you want the restoration of circumstances. That's not necessarily what God has for you. Maybe he doesn't want to do anything in your circumstances. But God, what are you seeing in my circumstances? Where are you focusing in my circumstances? Where's your focus in my failure? Where's your focus in my success? Where's your focus in my marriage? Where's your focus in my relationship with my leaders or with the guys I'm standing with? I want to focus where you are focusing. Because maybe he's not focusing on changing your circumstances. But he's focusing on you being a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. And in that place of his splendor, circumstances will change because of his splendor that is seen through you as a planting of the Lord in the midst of those challenges. That's why all these hundreds, even more than a thousand, two thousand times, he would say, see, look. You remember that one when Jesus will build his temple? As Zechariah says, we've talked about this. We did a series even on four Sundays about it. Where he says, watch the man. You remember? Three or four? Remember? Okay. When he says, watch the man. 
who will come to his temple and he will build his house and he will sit on the throne. Do you have a desire to see the authority of God, of God on the throne, and that you can worship him? God wants to restore that in your life, but not just restore, but with that, he wants to do so much more, so much more. If you allow him, that you will not stand on the side, and he's working it, but you're not working with him. You're not part of what God is doing, or are you part of what God is doing? Will you be in the river, and will the river flow through you? Will you look at the river? Hello? Will you be in the river? God, take me deeper with you. Take me deeper with you. And then, will the river flow through you? You have the three? You will look at the river. You will look at what God is doing. You will see the Spirit of God. You will be able to see the Spirit of God. You will be able to see what He is doing, the will of God, but you're not in it. And there's a time and there's a way through the grace of God and the blood of Christ that you can be in his will. You can be in the flow of the spirit, in the passion of his love, in the, the guidance through his peace. You can be in the river and then in that place like we sang this morning, take me deeper. Take me deeper into not the good, the perfect, but the pleasing will of God. The depth of that place where you are so pleased, Lord. Because that's eternal life, knowing you from that place. That's quality that will stay forever. That means eternal life on earth. That's a quality in my life. If I'm so in the water, so deep with him, into his pleasing, well, I'm walking in something that has eternal value. Or everything will be burned away, but I will be saved as through fire, says Paul to the Corinthians. And I'm still saved. I'm not rejected. I'm not condemned in heaven. But I could have learned so much more about it on earth, what I cannot learn in heaven, that in spite of whatever, that will be established in my life. Deeper, deeper. And from that place, when I'm in the river, I understand how to... Walk in the pleasing will of God. That's Romans 12 verse 2. Hey, those who didn't know that, you've written it down. If you don't write it down, it's because, oh, it's old news. Great. Good testimony. What am I saying? From that place, let the river come forth through your life. There's revelation in the beauty of everything that's perfect in the splendor of who God is. There's a river of life flowing from the throne of God. You know about that verse. That's at the end of Revelation. There's a river flowing from the throne of God. My brother, my sister, but here's symbolic something. From the throne of God in your life. From the authority of God. From the place where he is honored, he's wowed, he's worshipped. From that place, there's a river that's flowing through you. That's coming from heaven. The freshness, the guidance, the working of the spirit, the moving of God through your life. But in the church of Christ... That river is supposed to flow into the nations. I'm now at the end of this whole passage. But at the end of the day, through your life, uh, the living water of God is supposed to flow into Bluefontaine, supposed to flow into the university, into the schools, where you work, where you study. Flow through the business that you have. If the authority of God is established in your life, if God has the throne in your heart, then the river will flow. Are you with me? Because the Spirit of God is faithful to the honor of God. Faithful to the Word of God. It has the final say. The Word of God has the final say. It embodies, it, it explains the throne of God that will have the final say. Many into eternal death and many into eternal, eternal life. But let the word be on the throne to judge your life today. So that what is rubbish must be burned away today, Lord, please, by your grace. And that what is from you must bring forth 30, 60, 100 fold harvest. And build on that in my life and through my life, please, Lord. You're still here. Now, this is what I ask you to evaluate for next year. For next year. But watch. Watch is that sudden movement 
Watch, because God can move within half a second. Within half a second, God can move. Watch. Everybody say, watch. But then in the Amplified, it's also saying the same. Watch the man. It's not your ordinary man. There's a lot of men you can go out, you can see, you can watch what they are doing. Many people are watching what they, people are doing like we said in the past. If you have that one hero and you're a little child and you enter the kingdom, the kingdom, the authority of God as a child, then what is in your life? You have the capacity to watch the one that you adore, to watch the hero, to watch the one that you are consumed with, little child. If you entered the kingdom as a child, but otherwise you are saved, the kingdom is in you, but you're not seeking the kingdom. Uh, two different things. But if you watch, like a child watching, where's the hero? He does not see all the other people. He's watching. And when he finds it, there's an immediate response from the child. Are you with me? That when you can see where he is, you watch for that movement of God. There's a response in you. You watch because God wants to reveal himself and he wants to do something. So every time God through the prophets and he himself giving you, my brother, my sister, more than a thousand times the command to watch. God is serious. God is serious. God is serious about wanting you to see what he sees. He wants you to focus on what he is focusing on in your success or your failure, your circumstances, that what you're going through. Remember that word. Will you? Please? Zechariah 6, I, I said this now. It's... it's See, it's watch, it's look at, it's behold. I don't have time to go into that. Please get that teaching. You will find it with four Sundays teaching about all of that. Right, I'm rather moving on. In that day, I will raise up the tabernacle, the fallen hut that needs to be restored. Afrikaans, die vervalle, die vervalle. And that hut that God wants to restore is talking about in the end time, that what God has done there where his presence came down from heaven and he was seen by the whole nation of God. That God is coming down. And God wants to restore the fallen. That, that what was like ruined. But what? What is it all? What has fallen in your life that makes that the presence of God cannot come down in such a place where he's honored? What is that? Okay, hallelujah. Okay. They didn't forespell it. But okay, praise the Lord. What are we saying? What are we saying? God wants to restore a lot of things in your life so that the honor of God will be in you. So that the honor, the presence of God will be so in you where that in that place he, he is respected. He is respected. So the first thing that you need to understand according to the pattern, build it as in the days of old. Everybody say, build it as in the days of old. As in the days of old, where you get the fullness of God came unto the temple. Today you are the temple. I am the temple. That's the place, first place of restoration where God wants to restore, where God wants to build. So God wants to work in your life in whatever his focus, first of all, is to restore, to rebuild, to bring forth in you the place where he will be honored, the place that is full of his honor. His praise will be on my lips. I will be full of the honor of God. I will be full. It will be inside of me that I, I cannot but bring it out. Jeremiah says, it's a fire shut up in my bones. I cannot but speak about it. And like we said, you can have a fire of bitterness. You can have a fire of judgment. You can have a fire because of what you, you brought that fire from hell in you with that issue, with that person, with that leader, with that brother, with that somebody, with that whoever. And that destructive fire from hell is burning in you. And some way you just once again going to find fault. But that even with yourself, for some reason in that rejection, you can have such a fire that you're going to put yourself down. You're going to put yourself as two out of ten. 
Because there's a destructive fire from hell burning in you. And somewhere it, it will just pop out again. You need God to rebuild. You need restoration. But you need to understand the original pattern. That the fire in you, God, fill me with your fire. You're a consuming fire. Fill me with your fire. That that it becomes so a passion in me to honor you in the midst of whatever. So that when the tabernacle of David is rebuilt, is rebuilt in my life, it means I'm so stable that it doesn't matter if God do what I'm asking, if my circumstances change in, in positive or negative, whatever, I will honor him. Hell and the enemy must say, they frustrate me so much. Because it doesn't matter what we throw to, to that lady, she still honors God. And then the enemy is frustrated with you. And not he's doing that because you are frustrated. And when you're up, you can praise God. When you're down, you cannot praise God. When this is happening, you honor the stress. And stress is welcome in your house, the tabernacle of stress. The place, the home of stress, the home of anxiety, the home of fear, the home of all this other rubbish. Because I choose to walk with it. Come to know the pattern. How must the tabernacle look that God wants to restore in my life? Because then I will be able to walk with him, work with him in the right focus. Because I see what he's seeing. He's going in that direction. He's looking there in my circumstances. And I'm going with him because I, I'm seeing what he's... But if I'm looking there the whole time and he's looking there and he's building into that direction, I'm building there, you will have frustration and be frustrated till you die. Forget about a life to enjoy and a life to the full that God Christ had for you. Not anymore in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. But see what he's seeing. Focus where he's focusing on. And then you will understand to work with God that he will restore. He will restore that tabernacle. The place where he can come down, my father's home. Where he can come down. In that tabernacle, God was welcome to come down. And all flesh had to stand back. Let your flesh stand back so that the king of glory may enter. Amen. Because... Hell will be vomit out everything what's in it in the end time. So you can be filled with the fullness of hell, if I can say like that, that will be exposed on earth in the end time. But heaven will open up also. On earth as it is in heaven. The more we come into the place when Jesus will come back, the more that prayer will be fulfilled. That more and more it will be on earth as it is in heaven. Where? Hell is exposed, but heaven's windows are open. Over the church, over the church, over the church. Supposed to be then over your life, over your life. It's poured out. Because you know how God is restoring, 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 restoring. So that he himself visibly... In, in certain ways can come down through his church into the nations. Will you part of it or will you just be expectate, a spectator of it? No, through the blood of Christ, be part of it. Amen. I will raise up its rooms. That's what we said, pain whipper. You don't have another English word for that. I asked for the Amplified Bible. That's most probably the Amplified. Hey. Heap of rubble. Runes, heap of rubble, pain whipper. My brother and my sister, what? Raise up its runes so that the runes are more. <laughs> no, 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 no. In the runes of your life, of the pain whipper, the heap of rubbish, according to you in your life. What God's seeing that is potential. And out of the rubbish, that heap of rubble. He wants to build something. But will the rubble be your excuse? Or will the rubble, in the rubble, when you look at all the rubble in your life, thy pain will, will you see 
and realize that God wants to build something. Don't be discouraged about the ruins. Don't be discouraged, but expect the miracle of God that from the ruins, you will at the end of the day stand with a testimony. It was only God. I couldn't have done this. I, but you can have the runes and give up. Or you can have the runes and give over to God so that he can do the work. Give up is I'm quitting. Because I cannot trust God with this. I cannot trust anybody. I, will, I, I bow down to the runes in my life so that I will just become more negative, more negative, without less faith, with more, with more fear, with more doubt in my life as I bow down before the runes in my life. Runes in relationships. Runes in where I trusted him. It didn't happen. I trust him for the finance. Didn't, I trust him and I walked out and I uh, talked about Christ and nothing happened. But you don't know, I don't know about many of those runes because we walked away from it. My brother and my sister, if you want God to restore according to the pattern, you need to see what he is seeing. And that many times it will have to look at the runes in our lives. I trust, I pray, I beg you, I urge you in this time in December before next year, say, God, reveal the runes to me. The enemy, yes, so that you will be condemned and take your condemnation and, and, and old cows. You have English one guys also have that type of saying. Don't get the old chicken out of the whatever. Are you with me? But some of that old kuya that we called old cows, we must take out because some of that is runes that God wants to do a miracle. Where God wants to do a miracle with that. If you want to see the glory of God, especially in the, as in the days of old. As in the days of old, of that what went wrong in your life. No, back, back, back. As in the days of old, where every, with, when perfection came from heaven, the presence of God. As in the days of old when perfection came to earth and perfection spoke to the people and said, me as the perfection of, of everything, I will be your God, you will be my people, you will have my name. Me as the God of perfection, I have a name and my name will be over you. Are you with me? Don't be a foolish virgin. Take time with this, these principles, please. Because... Go and look at Amos. He was a farmer, but he was a prophet. Man, from chapter 1, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of prophecies about fire on the nations, uh, a judgment on the nations, God dealing with the enemy. And God will deal with a lot of rubbish. God will deal with a lot of rubbish. Remember Isaiah 666. Hey? Anybody who wants to talk about 666. You remember we talked about that? Who can remember? Don't lie. One, two. Ah, oh, I feel so comforted. Two. Can remember. Go and read your six six six. Okay. Isaiah sixty six verse six. And he's talking about God is dealing with the enemy. <laughs> so when six 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 want to manifest anywhere that uh, that demands control over the nations, just know. God has his 666, and that is his dealing with the enemy. He's exposing it just to show that he is the one that is the loser, if I can say like that. That Christ is a conqueror, and we with Christ, more than conquerors. Amen. Are you with me? Okay, I'm going to rush today, it seems to me. So... These things, if I, if I allow the restoration of God in my life, because I see what he's seeing, I focus on what he's focusing, and he's going to according to a perfect, perfect pattern. Everybody say perfect pattern. Where he blessed Adam and Eve and said, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, and reign over it. What does that mean? He blessed for a purpose. He blessed them and said, blessing that you do nothing with turn into a curse. And you make the blessing your God and not God your God. Are you, please, take that. Remember that. He blessed them for a purpose. 
you are blessed for a purpose. Every blessing, you will turn into praise. But from that place of praise, God's going to speak to you. Because my brother, when you focus on him, when you focus on me, he's a practical God. He's a practical God. He will speak to you about what you and him are going to do now. What you will do for him and what will you do with him. You remember what we said? Many people, they say, no, I'm not working for God. I'm working with him. Half truth. Half truth. Yes, I'm not working for him in performance. What they wanted to say is, I'm walking out of that place of performance to win a performance from God. That's a demon of performance. I'm walking away from the demon of performance, but into a place where I work for him and with him. When the word says, whatever you do, you do it as if unto the Lord. You do it for him. That's a worship lifestyle. That's why we say, for Jesus' name's sake. For his name's sake. Uh, uh, Moses, as a priest in worship, comes and says, for your name's sake, for your fame in the nations, please don't kill the nation. For your name's sake. And that is, for his name's sake, as a priest, you. But as a king, in the name of Jesus. For Jesus' name's sake, you. Priest, in the name of Jesus, because you walk with authority with him uh, you, you are still here and in that place that's how you will build because in the pattern you know as a priest it's for his presence a priest for his presence where he is honored where he is worshipped where he is welcome where he can do whatever he wants as a priest you find that you look at the word of God you find as a priest the pattern but then as a king you will rule forever as kings and priests with our Lord Jesus Christ the word says in Revelation hey so as a king you know how we deal with that what is from the enemy. That what is from the enemy be cut out. I do that with authority from my spirit. And I need to cut out the rubbish out of my life. I come in the authority of God. And if I come in the authority of God, Mr. David, Mr. David had understood how to be a priest. And if you just look in your Psalms, all the Psalms, and how whatever he went through and how he came as a priest before God. But he also understood how to be a king. And because he knew how to be a king, when he, you face your Goliath, when you face your Goliath, you don't have to psych yourself up to deal with Goliath. You just, you have a reference from the past. What happened with the lion? Mm. What happened with the bear? Mm. Saul, King Saul, with this, with this giant, it will just be the same as with the lion and the bear in my experience. Because of my experience with God, the giant is nothing. Tomorrow you're facing the giant. Why? Because it will be with the giant as it was when you had to face the lion and the bear that want to slaughter, want to slaughter not your life, but when you lay down your life for others. When David lay down his life for the sheep, not with a moan and a groan, and in the end with a moan and a groan, you, you lay down your life for others, and then your life is gone because they took everything. No, you gave everything in a wrong way, not to God. Ah, no. You just want to protect your life. The lion and the bear, they will slaughter you, or you will run for life for the rest of your life. From the bear and the lion. But if your heart is with the sheep, if your heart is with others, like the heart of Christ is with the people, if your heart is where his heart is, if your focus is where he's focusing on, he's focusing on his sheep. And here you find David with the heart of God. If you find David with a focus from God, is his focus. That's the protection of the sheep. When you could focus as a priest where God is focusing, he had the authority to slay the lion, the bear, Goliath. Did you catch that? I hope so. So you get into a place where you don't live for yourself and try to get authority. That's pride. And according to the word, the word of God is against you. And you, what you build, must fall. Because God will make sure that pride will fall. But when you don't try to preserve your life, but do it as if unto the Lord for others. And giving your life as a priest, I do this as if unto the Lord. 
then you will see God's salvation. You will see that what has eternal value. Because in how you give yourself to others, it has eternal value. There's eternal value, eternal quality in what you do. When you do it unto the Lord, when you do it for others. Put your focus with the sheep. And you will have the authority to slay the lion, slay the bear, slay Goliath. Goliath, sorry, David didn't come. How dare you come against me? Rubbish. You're facing your giant and you take your authority. And how can you come against me? He never said that. He said, you're coming with all the facts. I'm coming with the truth. I'm coming in the name of the Lord. I'm not coming in my name. I'm coming in the name of the Lord. How dare you challenge the people? Not how you dare challenge me. Oh, are you here? How dare you challenge the people of God? The slag orders van God. The leers, leer orders van God. I don't know the English. How dare you challenge the army of God? The armies of God. Because he understands the collectiveness of the body. The collectiveness of the sheep. The collectiveness of this army. That the army of God is not me. Because they cannot do. Okay, I will be. I will stand in the gap. And how dare you challenge me? You better find that key. Because that's how you can waste your life. Because you are very obrecht. You are very sincere. You're very sincere in what you do. Like the suicide bomber, he's very sincere when he blow up a lot of kids and a lot of people. And some of the guys in Israel uh, and, and the Palestinians are very sincere in what they do, in giving their lives. But it's not unto the Lord. There's a destructiveness that's working there that's not unto the Lord. But that destructiveness that is working there in Gaza and the whole place, that can work in me. I can fight the fight with the fight and the fight with this one and then... And the, he did something wrong to me. He was in the flesh. Now I'm in the flesh. And in my heart, I'm fighting the flesh that I saw in him. And how he was wrong. And he never said sorry. And, blah, 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 blah. and the destruction is working in me. And God cannot restore. Because I'm still busy destroying. Hello. God cannot restore. He cannot build up. Hello. He cannot raise it up again. That verse. The first verse. He cannot do it because I'm too busy destroying everything. Because I'm so deceived with your flesh and my flesh and having some stuffies. Not anymore in Jesus' name. Anybody saying amen? So, as in the days of old. Verse 12. That they may possess. Verse 11 is going to happen so that verse 12 can happen. Are you with me? So that they, so that they possess the remnant of Edom, what God has for them, all the nations that are called by my name, and all of all the nations that are called by my name. What is God saying? And we can stand on God's word, and I want this, and I trust God, I trust you for this, I trust you for that, I trust you for that, but I'm not prepared to go through verse 11. But if I say, God, you have such a lot of promises for my life. This is such a lot of prophecies and things for the future. Now we're talking about reformation, not just about the restoration. Restoration so that I can re bring reformation to a lot of things. Wherever I go, things can be reformed, be reformed, be reformed. It starts with me, but because things are restored in me unto the glory of God, the tabernacle of David is restored. God is on a doesn't matter what. And if God is on a doesn't matter what, when I come in the Word, things will be formed according to the pattern of God. Things will change according to the pattern of God because I had the guts to realize and take time with God so that there's restoration in my life. A process till I die, never I will be perfect. Ask my family, ask the leaders, ask some students. Okay, unfortunately. So there will be restoration forever. But the more I'm passionate into this, the more I will see reformation. That's why you find the guys that we call in the traditional churches, the Methodists, the Calvinists, the Lutheranists, and uh, all those guys. They brought reformation. What happened? They got into the Word. They saw the pattern. 
The pattern was restored in them as they started to believe, no, I'm not supposed to pay the priest for, for redemption, for forgiveness. I'm not supposed to, to make the Pope like God himself. No, I'm saved through grace, through faith. Wow, and for that, they stood up. And so many just gave their lives. Today, it's obvious. Some people sit here and they, are you saved? Yes. Child of God? Yes. But for that revelation, they gave their lives. They were willing to die. They will put it in paper. They will put it there. What was he in van 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 liter? Now we have it in Come, we have it. Is it enough? That manifesto that he put on the yeah, it was 19, but it was called something. All right, where Luther has put it out there, hammering it on the door of the of the temple. He knew he's asking not just for trouble; he's walking into trouble. Hello. But he was giving to, he was ready to give his life for that. And if he was ready to give his life for that, he was busy. Of all the nations that are called by my name. For the sake of all the nations that are called by God's name, I will give my life. I will risk my life. I will take the guts and the boldness and put it up there because I know God wants to bring restoration and the church and he wants the nations as an inheritance at the feet of Jesus. That's why you're not in heaven today. That's why you are not in heaven today. Because it's for a purpose. God wants to restore so that he can reform what's out there. Are you with me? Are you with me? Allow the process, my brother, my sister. He says that I may possess you must take possession of that. What is so many, so many, so many, so many things out there that God wants to give you. But it cannot happen because I cannot, I will not allow the process to see what he sees. What is, what must I see in my circumstances, in my shame, in my mistakes, in my, in my success? What is he seeing? I want to focus where he focus. But it will happen now in the right way, in Jesus' name. He says, of all the nations that are called by my name. Called by my name, says the Lord. Give me the last three words. Anybody? Oh, can somebody please bring me that water? That will be awesome. Here, here at the coffee station. Ask for sure, bottle key. So, what am I saying? God's going to do it. Says the Lord who does this. God's going to do it, finish and clear. Just like that. Thank you. God's going to do it, finish and clear. It's going to happen. That's what the prophet is saying. This is what God is saying. He's going to restore. He's going to rebuild. He, and those who are going to do it with him, he, they will be with. And then he's going to form. He's going into the nations and major things. He's going to do it. Finish. The question is, will you be with him? Or will you be on the sideline? Because if you're not with what doing what he is doing, you will be doing what the enemy is doing. But you will work with some other spirit because you are created in such a way. The baboon has no spirit that cannot connect with spirit. But if, the, if you're a spirit, a human being, and not some up baboon, that I believe we are all human beings, then he, what you do is connected with the spirit. Your spirit will be connected with the spirit always. When you're reborn, Holy Spirit testify in your Holy Spirit testifying in your spirit about your identity and whatever God wants. There's a connection. Connection. Deep calling unto deep. Deep calling unto deep. From the depth of God to the depth of who you are. From the depth of the quality in Him to the depth of the quality in your spirit where the fullness of God dwells. Deep calling unto deep. There's a depth of relationship that God has for you. Hello? But if you're not connected with the Spirit of God, you will be connected with the Spirit. But it will be some other demon. It's, the, it's, it's not going straight. It's either left or right. It's T-junction. 
in every situation is T-junction. You choose in every situation, with every temptation, with everything, is T-junction. I go with this spirit or with that spirit. I go with what the Holy Spirit is saying in my spirit, or I go with what the demon is saying in my flesh. That, yeah, this is like that, and you point the finger. Or this is like that, and you stress, and anxiety, and fear, and that. Just look away. I can see a few that wasn't obedient. <laughs> Who does this? Let's carry on. Let's quickly carry on. Number verse, is there no verse 13? Okay, there is a verse 13. Behold, once again, behold. In the word behold, there's more the thing of wow. So when God says, behold, it's a wow. When he says, look at, you see who he is. When he says, keep in sight, you, foc you must choose to focus on where he's moving. And when he says, watch, it's like for that sudden movement. That was that teaching other day. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper. What does that mean? And the treader of graves, him who sows the seed. And the mountain shall drop sweet wine. And all the hills shall melt. That is everything here to fall. Barren and unfruitful shall overflow with spiritual blessing. What are we saying? Uh, other scripts that connect with that scripture is in Isaiah where God says, before they call, I will answer them. And the other one, while they are calling, I will already answer. God is so ready, so ready that you, 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 you're planting and the harvest is already there. You, you are busy, there, but, 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 but the results are already there. Are you with me? That is supernatural. How can you plant and, 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 and it's like the harvest is, is, is already on you while you are still planting. That is, God is, God is so ready to give you the blessing. So ready to give you the impact. So ready to give you 30, 60, 100 fold harvest. He's so ready. The other scripture that says, you are not finished with your prayer. He's interrupting you with the answer. Yeah? You are asking for this, but he knows exactly what you're asking. And while you just started to ask him, he interrupts you with the answer and all the, the blessing of what you asked. <laughs> I think that's a good place to be. Don't you, would you not say? So what am I saying? You sleeping beauties, you're not sleeping there, hey? Oh, yeah. I'm watching you. What are we saying? Behold, those days are coming. But guys, we can pray for that. We can pray for the blessing. We can pray for the breakthrough. We can pray for the finances. We can pray for, for the inheritance. I can pray for what God has promised me, the Canaan, Canaan, Canaan. But I can also pray for Canaan. But I'm not prepared to go with God through the restoration process, to focus where he wants on that pain whipper, that uh, rubbish, heap of rubbish. The Isaiah says, Beauty for ashes. How can you see potential in ashes? Focus how he is focused. He can see potential in ashes. We want to know where is the beauty. Where is the diamond? Where is the gold? Can you look at the ashes and see the potential? But if I'm willing to go through these processes to Face the pain whipper, the, the ashes, the, the, the rubble, the rubbish in my life. And see the miracle of what God's going to do. If I'm prepared to allow that to restore, when, when there's cracks in the wall, you need to first break down everything that is cracked up to a place where it's not cracked. And then where there is not cracked, that is stable. If only from here now we need to rebuild. But it could be if there's some cracks that... We need to break down the wall, break down, not the enemy, because we are not stupid. We're going to break down the wall till the level where it's stable. So if you're not stupid and you want God's restoration, you must allow God and you with God to break open the strongholds and the, and the things in your life that you've built, a stronghold in, in the wall of fear and, and compromise and this and that. You need to 
be able to break it down, have the guts to do that so that God can restore. But if he restores, you will see the, the inheritance in the nations. You will see the glory of God. You will go with God, whatever he's doing. And then you will see how the blessing, you cannot keep up with it. It's, it's over, overrunning you. It's, are you with me? What that verse says. Okay. Verse 15 or 14. And I will bring back the exiles of my people, Israel, and they shall build, build, build the waste cities and inhabit them. And they shall plant the vineyards and drink the vine. And they shall also make gardens and eat the fruit of them. What are we saying? If you allow the restoration in your life, allow the restoration. God's going to do a major work in your life and through you into the nations. But then it's not God building in you. But from there, you will build the nations. You they shall build the waste. Waste. Everybody say waste. Waste cities and inhabit them. What you built will be to dwell in. And you will build for the nations so that the nations will know they are welcome with God. What you plant, the, the, the earth will serve you and bring to you the fruit to eat and to drink. Earth will serve you. The waste will turn into a testimony for God through your life because you allowed and you are as a, as a lifestyle allowing the, the restoration, the process of everything and the rubble and the stuff and all that so that God can do a major work in you so that through you things can happen. That this city in ruins, when we're talking about spiritually, will be built because the churches rose up. Because the churches what? They allowed the restoration of God. They allowed the restoration of the tabernacle of David. What? The, the, the honor of God is restored in the church. The respect for God is restored in the church. The worship. There's not the moaning and the groaning and the, and the challenge and the accusation and the criticism on the lips. No. The lips are full of the praise of God. Lupus are not super spiritual, but in everything, watch your mouth, what you say about others, even about yourself. Before you just honor your opinion Honor your opinion for the tabernacle of your demonic opinion because it cannot be godly. So you can restore the tabernacle of the demon of criticism in your life with hell. Or you can allow God to bring a restoration. And in that place, you will find that you will be more and more restored if you find the capacity in you to less moan and less have criticism and, and, and issues with people, but more in all circumstances, give Him glory. In all circumstances, pray in all manner, in all places, every time, in season and out of season. That means when you think it's applicable, and when you think it's not applicable, the word says then you must pray also. <laughs> uh, good. Amen. Are you with me? Hallelujah. Okay, let that be so through your life. And the last one, I think there's a verse 15 also. I don't know if it's there. Yeah. And I will plant them upon their land, and they shall no more be torn up out of their land, which I gave them, says the Lord your God. Now, there's a physical promise about Israel. And for that, we need a 12-hour um, teaching thing to bring the right perspective of that. Um, yeah. Where God is taking and will take because he will restore Israel in the sense of giving them a last chance in his grace for them to come and see the, the true Messiah that came already 2,000 years ago. That will happen. But that is also applicable. That, that was written for the whole church. Hello? In all the nations. In all the nations. What are we talking about? Last time, go with me. If you allow the restoration of the tabernacle of David, that the praise of God is established, that you will honor God, doesn't matter what you go through. And the praise of God is established on Mount Zion. Mount Zion is the mount, the mount that will not melt, the, the mountain that will not fall before God. There's only one mountain that will not fall. That's the mountain of God, Mount Zion. Mount Zion means the place where God alone is honored. When that mountain is established so that the new Jerusalem, the place, the for peace, the habit inhabit the habitation of peace. Die Wohnblatt von Friede. Give me the word. The habitation of peace. Where that is established in God's presence. When that is established in your life, open heavens to for to come down what is from God and stability 
from, from the ground is, it doesn't matter what happened on this ground, I will honor him. It doesn't matter what happened, I will stand in the honor of God. I will stand to honor him. If things work out for me, or if it doesn't work out for me, I will honor him. When that is, that is God's agenda, that is original pattern that you see what he's seeing. You look where he's looking. You focus what he's focusing on, and your life is so much easier. Not clickety-click and... No, but such a lot of things because you're not working against God and be frustrated with the word, frustrated with God and all that other rubbish. No, we do that and God is doing a major thing in you. Hello? You will do. You will bring reformation where you go. You will bring reformation. You touch the ground, it will produce. It will produce, not for you, just produce for the nations when when you have a certain salary or you get something and and grandma went and you say hallelujah because it's a time not because she's giving you 100 million hello your pass off your peter <laughs> what am i saying god what do you want to do what is your purpose with that because he's serving for the kingdom in the accurate way no i don't have a lot of money you have your time, you have your skill. What are you doing for the kingdom? But it's not you must come and work just on the farm. That's not what I said. There where you go, you go in the name of Christ. And you make sure that the reign, the authority of Christ is established so that from that place the river can flow. I didn't say that. I said that in the first service. Hey. Revelation, I think last chapter, first two verses. Somebody correct me. It says talking about the throne of God, and from the throne of God, a river will flow. A river will flow with trees that will give fruit 12 months out of 12 months, in season and out of season. Let's not go when Jesus looked at the tree that had no fruit. No, another time. But there's a river. But my brother, my sister, there's a principle established. When the throne of God is established in your heart, a river will flow from you to the nations. A river will flow from you to, to, to Bloemfontein. A river will flow from you into Madagascar. The river will flow through you. If what? If the throne is established. The honor of God is established in your life. That doesn't matter what. Then God can trust you with a life-giving flow. That you will bring life because you were not going to take the honor for yourself because the honor of god is establishing you through the throne of god will you remember this this is three sundays teachings but please go and look at that in revelation i will plant them now you have this impact where you go there's fruit for the nations and you when you plant there's something to drink for the nations where you build the nations are welcome in god's presence and then, it's not you in the nations, then God takes your life and you become the seed that are planted. Not now, you plant the vineyard, you plant the fruit trees, you are building. Now God takes your life because now you're in that place of, of maturity. Maturity, everybody say maturity. That God can trust you in such a way that he can take you and you are the planting. I, there shall be no more torn out of I will plant them. Everybody say, I will plant them. That's God. You can get not into the good will of God, God uh, the will that he will allow in his grace. Not the perfect will of God, but the pleasing will of God. Pleasing will of God. That you and God get excited about the same things. You are fulfilled with the same things that he is fulfilled with. You, you, you understand there's this heart-to-heart -heart connection that is just open. The pleasing will of God. And in that place, God takes you and he plants you in a certain place. And there you will stay. Isaiah says, I'm a planting. You will be a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. Let's say, God wants to make me a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. God, come and help us. We trust you. We, we need you, Lord. Come and do that, what you want to do in and through our lives. Please, Lord. And I pray for every man, woman in this place. And I say, God, forgive us for not allowing the restoration. Forgive us for fighting many times when you want to restore and that we honor that heap of, of rubble or that ashes. 
by making that the excuse why certain things cannot happen in our lives. We will not honor that anymore because all things are possible with you and through you by faith. I thank you for that, Father, that you come and do that. Bring that restoration process in us and even if we get us courage, help us, establish in us how to see you in every situation, how to focus where you are focusing on in every situation, God, so that we can walk according to your purposes. Let it be so as we walk from this place. We trust you for that in Jesus' name so that, Lord, many things can be transformed through our lives. Let, let it happen. A reformation, Lord, in the nations, through your church, wherever they are, whether in Israel, in Ukraine, wherever, in Bluefontaine, in this nation, please, Lord, have mercy and grace on your church. God, so that we can be co-workers and work with you, so that what we touch will flourish as we choose to walk in the council of the counselors, standing in the way Jesus Christ, sit seated with Christ in heavenly places, therefore, in meditating on your law, everything that we do can prosper, according to Psalm 1, in your word, Lord. We go with that, Father. We trust you for that. We believe that. God, so that we can have that awesome honor, only by your grace, to be a planting of the Lord, to display your beauty, to display your awesomeness, your awesome attractiveness, Lord, your uncomparable Unique beauty, Lord, and that is a display of your splendor. Help us, Lord, to come into that place and understand how to walk worthy the calling that you've called us with here on earth. We thank you for that and let it be so in all of our lives. And as we say, amen and amen.